I'm tall, so not the biggest barbarian, but I'm jacked. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we put this in two grades, and then we got to the right, and then we gave her a little sticky one, and then what if we did this? Oh, come on! Yeah, another drink, please. Yes, you may, Andy. Put your hat up, it's better! No, 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 no. Sarah, no way, prostitution, Sarah, girl. Yes, you, you, I'm gonna fight you. Uh, Sort of you guys know who I am, right? Yeah. 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 Goggles. You're Dr. Mole. Robot. Dr. Robot. What do you do? King of Mole trying to stop laughing. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. Why not? It worked again. I'm Batman. And I even, I don't hate that for the record. I hate. I hate the fandom of Batman. Oh, okay. cool. Okay, that's that's way more people. It is. It is. It's a lot of like, actual human beings. Were you, um, gonna... you need to rub this crap <laughs> off your neck and not smell like me. Or I will fail. Just start rubbing his neck and just getting like... Uh, I am failing your It doesn't matter what I smell like at this point. <clears throat> to a feline, you have wolf's piss on you. I'm just going to point at my feline eyes. I have some time. You've just tuned in. We had the brilliant idea while we were fishing at the Dark Moon Festival. Oh, jeez. To do a dungeon with fishing poles equipped. <laughs> because why oh, not? Mayor, and so we mayor, drank all of the alcohol in our bags, and we equipped our fishing poles and our aquatic pets, and we went to do a dungeon. I feel like I need to put that up. So this was the end of our epic tale. What holds for next week as the heroes set sail? We may find more family, we may find where things start. All we know is to follow our heart. So our heroes set forth to pillage and to wander in the magical continent of wonder. Indigo Connect. So that will help. Yep, there we go. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, it is, uh, what is it? It's Thursday night, and it is time for a little Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, so thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we are Indigo Chameleon, and tonight uh, we are going to be playing uh, another episode of The Lost Isle. Hello, Spotly. Um, so we have a few announcements before we get started with tonight's game. Uh, come hang out with us on the Discord. We would love to have you. We have inspirational memes, and we have... Uh, the most up-to-date uh, schedule changes that happen as they come in. We have a play-by-post set in the wild, weird west. Uh, so uh, lots of interesting... We also recruit straight from the Discord. So come and hang out with us there on the Discord. Uh, we would love to have you. We also have a merch shop where you can buy cool t-shirts, just like the one Wolfgren is wearing. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and the mug that uh, Indigo Chameleon is drinking from. So uh, and it helps us keep the lights on. So um, uh, yeah, it's Magnoth wins. Uh, you do, buddy. Uh, we also have an online store. Uh, it's a fun little way for you to interact with the stream along with stream points. It's a way to just uh, up your digital avatar. Tonight's item, I'm very proud of, folks. Because of all the items I've ever created, <laughs> this one <laughs> takes the cake. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of the interweb, Mike's <laughs> Think and Sack. <laughs> uh, no longer does this Think and Sack belong to anybody else. No, sir, this is Mike's Think and Sack. Uh, there is no other Think and Sack like Mike's Think and Sack. 
and uh, <laughs> this thinking sack will give you uh, advantage on all them uh, history and intelligence checks for an entire session. Uh, should you put it on, you don't even need to wear it. So if you got that special time where you need to be thinking real, real good like Mike, try Mike's thinking sack. Uh, <laughs> There's yeah. no stinking thinking around here. No. Uh, we have lots of exciting shows coming on. Tomorrow night, uh, we go back to Neverland as the crew, uh, for lack of a better word, saves some animals. Uh, we learn about some of the, the amazing wildlife that lives in Neverland. And uh, we Clip is going to uh, do her best to save uh, this brand new wolf cub and help re reunite it with uh, its family. So tune in tomorrow night for that. Uh, it looks, it's a lot of fun. Uh, that's on Friday. Saturday, we don't have anything going on here. Sunday night, if we do have something, it's going to be a pop-up stream, probably a little bit homebrew and brew with you. I may or may not be in full Santa regalia for this homebrew and brew with you. Uh, oh, my gosh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> homebrew and brew with you and you and Santa. <laughs> and I'm checking my list. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, that, that might be happening as well on Sunday. Uh, on Monday, uh, we don't have a, a, a one shot or anything planned uh, because Thanksgiving week is kind of a, a tricky week with people going in and out of town. Tuesday, we go back to Wonderland as we be continue our assault against the Red Keep. Wine in Hand joins us for another night uh, as he has uh, the world is a, a bit in chaos as Cheshire has lent the last of his godly powers to wine in hand and seemingly has disappeared from the planet. Um, and so they are searching for answers and uh, that will continue on Tuesday. Uh, on Thursday, it's a Thanksgiving. So we will wish everybody a very happy Thanksgiving. So I think that's it for announcements. She was built to be unsinkable with new features such as watertight compartments and remotely activated watertight doors. It's no wonder she only carried lifeboats for 1,178 people, about half the people that were on board the ship that night. To some, she was a marvel that could accommodate the wealthiest people in the world with a luxury most would never see in their lifetime. To others, she was a fresh start, providing passage for immigrants from all over Great Britain, Ireland, Scandinavia, and beyond. To most that traveled on April 14th at 11.40 p.m., she would be a final resting place. They say that some storytellers tell stories of the ideal world. Through their art, they fix the mistakes of the past. Because when pen touches paper, you're finally in control. Now, we tell stories here on Indigo Chameleon. We get to be heroes, and we get to save the day and fight the bad guy. And, and we're trying something new here. We're explorers of unknown territory. You've put your trust in me as players and as an audience to mesh the past with a brighter future that we can envision. Everyone deserves the chance to fight. Everyone deserves the chance to live and to be the hero. Heroes, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to close your eyes. Audience, I need you to close your eyes as well. For a second, for the tiniest of seconds, acknowledge those that lost their lives. Acknowledge the shock of being woken from a sound sleep, not knowing that it was coming to feel secure, and then to be jarred awake. Feel the room get cold. Breathe in. Breathe out. Get ready. You're going to have one second, 10 seconds, 
actually, because you see in moments of crises, scientists have discovered you don't make up your mind in one second. You make up your mind 10 seconds before it happens. 10 seconds before you make your move, you've already established who you are and what you're going to do. You just need time to justify and to put it into motion. 10 seconds. 10 seconds is an eternity. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Open your eyes. The island shakes. The fight that was about to take place in the arena suddenly comes to a halt as everyone shakes in place. Those standing around the pit and watching what is about to, tr to happen before you, the entire island lurches to a halt. It is not the gentle jarring that the island traveled in once before. This is a sudden stop, a, a violent shove in a direction. When this happens, most of the warriors around this circle begin to scatter like roaches. The person in the pit with you, Jay, the Goliath, looks at you point blank in the eyes and he says, I owe it to you, Dad. We'll see this through another day. And he Agreed. jumps out of the pit, holding a hand out to lift you up. I uh, take it and jump out with him. Most of the warriors at this point are scattering to the far winds, some of them running to families and friends, trying to figure out what is going on until a voice enters the head of every single person on the island simultaneously. It's Mordru. You recognize his, his gruff demeanor instantly, and some of you that are magic users begin to wonder just how powerful he can be if you are all seeing this magic hit everyone at the same time. Mordru says a few words that cause your heart to stop, William. We've hit something. The island doesn't hit things. The island is infallible. The island moves through time, but the island doesn't <coughs> hit things. Things don't hit the island. With this voice echoing in your head, uh, most of the people running about stop frozen in their tracks, not knowing where to go, not knowing what to do. It's the same panic that must have been felt. With that silent pause before the dam breaks, Mordru's voice enter enters your ears once again. We've hit a ship. There are people in the water. Make your way to the beach. Save as many as you can. You heard it, boys. Let's move it. Everybody scatters. People are running. Um, those that are not allowed off the island uh, begin to run to various shops and homes in this place, start gathering supplies and start looking for um, warm blankets, uh, food, water, medical supplies. You see a team of healers running from the celestial deer and making their way out of the town, past the town square and towards the beach, towards the path that you all followed, past the inn of where you were all staying. Um, as you all make your way down towards the beach, um, uh, which I assume you all are running to, does anybody stop to grab anything, or are we just caught in the moment? I'm actually going to give a, a piercing whistle and uh, call Wolf to my side. Uh, Wolf is at your side uh, as you are running. And right now, all of you are going off of instinct. The thing about heroes is they rush in to danger. When others would stay back or be afraid in the moment, that's not what heroes do. And you've all accepted this destiny and this responsibility. That destiny and responsibility becomes even more palpable to you as you run to the beach, which is already being gathered by many, many different types of individuals. Uh, more people than you ever thought you've seen on the island thus far. 
you see your uh, local bartender who's there and he's got a table set up and he's preparing food and drinks, um, uh, setting up to, to give to people that are setting up what looks to be impromptu triages set along the shore. Um, before you is something you never thought you'd see before. Before you is a gigantic ship. It's in the water and it is massive in scale and size. Um, it is not on the island. It is almost like it skimmed the island and then went away, almost like one of the craggy peaks alongside the island or maybe it jutted out and hit it, but you do see a long sort of drag or puncture into the ship itself. The ship is starting to lower into the water. The electric lights that are on the Titanic have yet to stop working, and you hear vague sounds of yelling, screaming. It's too soon. It's before anyone has even made their way to the lifeboats yet. But the people on the shore are helpless. They, they are not allowed to leave the island for fear that they may step off and never be able to return. They're held in place. How far offshore is the ship? It is quite a distance away. I'm going to say it's about 500 yards. As you are looking off at the shoreline, uh, there is a faint pop of arcane energy behind you as uh, a familiar uh, blue-skinned individual that you have been interacted with before places a hand upon your shoulder, William, and uh, looks at you and looks at the group and says, I can get you over there. Get us there now. Um, uh, 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 there is the... Uh, channeling of arcane energy and a small portal opens up in front of you all. Um, the portal, upon looking through it, you see a a ship deck as people begin to first wake up and sense that there's something wrong. Uh, the minute you you walk through this portal, do we all go through? It's Ooh. utter it's utter chaos. Yeah. It's utter chaos. People are starting to run out of their their. Uh, their rooms and the air gets frigidly cold the minute your feet are not touching the soil. Um, Turk, before you step on foot to the island, as everyone is making their way through the portal, Wolf is at your side. Telepathically, you hear a thought. Are you sure? Of course, we, we, we must. Come with me. Wolf Corinne, I need you to understand something. Part of a hero's job is to make these decisions. Wolf is not immortal. He will revert back to that surfboard, but he is, he is capable of being left behind and hurt. <coughs> So I need to know that you understand and accept these responsibilities before you make your way to the ship. I'm not saying that this could happen, but I need you to know the stakes before you do uh -oh. this. Um, I'm actually going to turn to him and, and I let him, I'm going. I don't know. Are you coming with me? This is up to you completely. I think we could use your help, but I'm not forcing you to come. That's, that's all journey. he needs to hear. Uh, as he says, I think you could use my help. Uh, the last people through the portal are Turk and Wolf. Um, heroes, adventurers, you find yourselves aboard the deck of the Titanic. We are on the top deck. Right now, chaos is starting to ensue as the ship is taking on water. Um, for those of you that have done your research into ti to the Titanic, it takes – two hours and some change for the thing to fully sink into the water. It is a it is a long process where some of these watertight areas start filling up with water. Right now, you are in the central area. People are starting to crowd against these lifeboats, which are pushed up against these mechanisms, which drop lifeboats into the water. Um, you realize that you are very early on in the process. Um, that being said, things are going to move fast here, so I need everybody to roll initiative. You are not in combat right now, but this is how quickly you're thinking on your feet and how fast you're able to make these decisions as you move forward. 
You are also able to, if you are unsure, to move yourself to the bottom of the initiative order, if you would like to do that. Uh, that being said, 20 to 25. Hello, Castle Entertainment. Thank you. 22. 22. 22. Uh, you two roll off, or somebody just 13. tell me who is going. Oh, go ahead. Also, did Zalid come through the portal as well? No. Uh, 15? I don't know where you were. She rolled a 13, I think. Okay. 13. Okay. So, William, you were going to be up first. Um, Cass, followed by you. Um, 20 to 15. 16. Yara, uh, 15 to 10. 14 for Turk. Turk. And 10 for Wolf. Wolf. Uh, 10 to 5. 5. <laughs> <laughs> And batting cleanup? Four! There <laughs> she is. Uh, Crystal. All right. So, my initiative order. William, Cass, Kiara, Turk, Wolf, Jay, Crystal. And if anybody else happens to be around, we will implant them into the initiative order as we see fit. That being said, heroes, you are aboard the deck of the Titanic. The ship is sinking into the freezing cold waters um on the shore of the island itself you do see people that are setting up to help those that might exit off of the ship uh, if anybody would like to make a history check uh to find out information about the titanic otherwise I as would. players i will let you use what information that you have found on your own but kiara I, this is for like extra stuff that i might know yeah okay uh, that is uh, plus zero, so 18. 18. Uh, Cass, did you roll as well? What'd you get? A six. I saw that one movie with Leonardo da Vinci once. <laughs> you did see that <laughs> one? Oh, it's the movie with the kid from, um, yeah. No, she's growing she said pain. Leonardo da Vinci. No, I know. I know. <laughs> okay. It was one of the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, awesome. he was in it. Love it. <laughs> um, so, uh, Kiara, uh, you are aware, after doing a little bit of research on the Titanic, that one of the trouble spots that they ran into is uh, there were limited lifeboats aboard the vessel itself, but a lot of the, um, the mechanisms used to lower lifeboats were also jammed at the time. So not even all the lifeboats were able to get off the ship in time in a timely manner to get people to, like, to be rescued. So that is a trouble spot here with the 16. You'd also be aware that if you were looking to get as many people off as possible, to go below deck as fast as you can and start working your way up. But those are two trouble areas that you may want to think about, knowing that lower class passengers were below deck. Um, okay. I don't go first, so. Uh, and just so you know, one of Turk's first instincts was to go after the lower class passengers. Okay. Also, uh, having seen the Titanic and I will the say, kids that were locked. I will there. say this: Turk takes off. Okay. Uh, uh, as as the group is starting to figure out where they want to go, Turk takes off. Um, I need everybody to roll me probability dice, please, before you start Ooh. running off. Is that the D one hundred, right? D one hundred, please, uh, before you start rolling off. I've got a number range in mind. Ooh. That's a 60 for me. Okay. I don't have one of those, so Avre, please don't take me. That's okay. Uh, 60 for Crystal. Cass, what did you get? 45. 45. Turk? 90. 90. Jay? 40. 40. William. 42. 42. Do you want me to rolling for uh, Wolf as well? No, it's not going to affect Wolf. Okay. 24. 24, Kiara. Uh, the range was 60 to 69. Chris Ooh. Crystal. Uh, yes. You, uh, your blood goes cold for a second 
as you okay. remember, a, a bit of family lore that your great great grandmother was aboard the Titanic. Okay. And do I remember anything about her or where she might have Give me been a history or if check. she made it off? Give me a Sorry? history check. I rolled my history check before it was a 19. 19. Uh, you know that she made it off, but you know that the traditionally the, the Titanic hit an iceberg, didn't hit an island, or maybe things are different now, or maybe things are the same now. Um, but you know that she was uh, of a, a little bit of upper class, um, uh, of wealthy status. You remember what she looked like. Uh, it would send you to about mid deck, I think, to 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 look for her. Um, that's that's all you can. With a nineteen, yeah, you would know she's about mid deck. Okay, and I'm gonna head in that direction because what I'd also like to do is because we've got a lot of people heading to lower class. Yes. Um, I'd like to help. I know that the upper class are gonna be the first ones to the boats, and I want to facilitate that process. Right. So, Crystal, you're gonna facilitate upper class making their way to the boats and just starting to do and crowd getting control. boats filled. Turks running below deck. Who's joining them? I would, but I would yell over my shoulder that uh, we gotta watch the. The systems on the lifeboats. Okay. Kiara's leaving with Turk. Cass, where are you going? I'm probably staying closer to the top, but probably not right on the surface because the people on the top are going to be scrambling a lot and there's going to be chaos. So I'm heading below deck, but not low, low. Okay. So Cass is going by herself uh, to like a couple of decks down to also help facilitate and sort of keep an eye on people. Upwards motion. Right? Upwards motion. William, where are you going? I'm going to fix the jammed wenches using my thieves tools. William's going to work on the wenches. We're going to split the party as much as <laughs> we can. Working on the wenches can. or the yeah. wenches? The wenches. Yes. <laughs> the, the wench wenches. Um, and Jay. Jay's sticking next to Crystal. She's going to need muscle to corral these people. Got it. Oh, okay. Wait, how many groups are we split into right now? <laughs> this is uh, just four. four. Crystal, how low are you going? Middle, I'm um, one of the middle. I'm deck. going mid deck. That's probably oh, I was going to stay on up. the. Sorry, Jay, staying on the upper deck, facilitating people getting into lifeboats, making sure that they're not leaving before full. Okay. That's going to be mid deck, though. Was that mid deck? I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so we got Jay three of us going to the lifeboats. Life okay, so three of us are going to lifeboats. Jay, one's William going to bottom deck. Jay, William, and Kiara are going to. No. No. Jay, William, and Crystal. Jay, William, yeah. and Crystal. And Crystal. Lifeboats. Lifeboats. Okay. Uh, Cass is splitting up and just helping facilitate on one of the lower decks, knowing that she can handle crowd control. With. A couple of decks Turk. down. With Turk. I'm yeah. I'm going down with Turk to the. To get people up. It's Cass by herself, and then Turk and Kiara yeah. going below. Well, well Cass is still going to... Yeah. yeah if Let, we're all headed to the same place, we can stick together. Let's do that. That would be great. That yeah, would be let's amazing. do that. <laughs> okay. So, that being said... Uh, <laughs> uh, that being said, let's start with Jay and William and Crystal. Uh, as you make your way to... Uh, uh, mid deck, uh, William, you immediately head over towards where these mechanisms are. You see individuals uh, there that uh, uh, people in uniform that look like they've already started the process of uh, unbelievably like getting these mechanisms ready and ready to go. So, what would you like to do, William? Um, do I, would I have insight on specifically which ones were jammed? No, you would not. You can nope. give me an investigation check. Okay, I would like to do an investigation check to determine which ones are jammed, or, or do they have they already identified those and they're working on them now? No, they have not. Okay, this was so a I process like to... that once they got one boat in, it turns out that there was jamming that happened. Okay, so that is a sixteen. Sixteen. Um. So William, the first thing that happens is you get down and you started identifying this mechanism. Uh, one of the people in uniform goes, "What are you doing?" The, sir, no, no, no. Uh, uh, the, the lifeboats are for women and children first. Of course. Just making sure that these mechanisms function properly. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do. do you, are, are you... Do you... 
are you here on the ship? I'm going to pull out my wallet and flash it like it's a bag. I'm, I'm here on... I know what I'm doing. Just let me get to this. Are you trying to psychic pay for this, dude? It doesn't have any psychic pay. It's just my wallet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just Ooh, flash your wallet. <laughs> I'm, I'm into it very much, I'm though. I'm not wearing shorts. Give me... <laughs> You're not wearing shorts. Sir, I can't let a man so wear shorts. They're not the shorts you're looking for. I can't let a man wearing jorts fix this ship. Um, uh, yeah, give me a deception check at advantage as you flash your wallet. And it's a bit chaotic at the moment. Okay, good. First one was 20. And so that will be 19. 19. Uh, yes, that's fine. Uh, thank you. And... Uh, you begin to work uh, diligently at this uh, uh, with your investigation. You begin to examine the mechanisms and things of that sort. Jay and uh, Crystal, um, as you are there at the deck, uh, this is when the first swarm happens. As people begin to crowd around and start arguing for lifeboat passage and things of that sort. Many people are carrying luggage with them uh, as if they are ready to take spots and... Uh, jump in the lifeboats and sort of push people out of the way as that happens. Um, I will... What are we dressed as? Uh, do we just go in as our street clothes? You are wearing street clothes at the moment. There's no mist, there's no veil that you have walked through. So right now, you are a large green man that's standing in this area. <laughs> but like, uh, oh people, no. pe people are giving pause, but they're a little preoccupied at the moment. Um, I'm rushing to the front of the crowd. Okay. Uh, facing them, brandishing my intricate <laughs> clockwork axe. Little bits of smoke puffing out of it. And uh, holding it up in a sign of, you gotta stop, and, and I'm shouting at the top of my lungs. Everybody stop using intimidation. As much as so I we can. have psychic paper, and ladies and gentlemen, this is my boom stick. Uh, <laughs> great. Uh, Shop smart. It's Shop Shop S -smart. S smart. Uh, intimidation check, big guy. That's a good roll. Um, 22. Uh, yeah, I think when the large, uh, where does the 800-pound gorilla sit? Wherever he wants. Uh, I think as you run over to the central area and you stick your uh, clockwork axe up into the air, uh, everybody that's rushing about the ship stops for a minute and looks over at you. You've gathered their attention, but there's still an anxiousness to them. All right, top of my lungs. Ladies and gentlemen, leave your bags. We are not taking those aboard, the lifeboats. We are filling each one before it is dropping into the water. The three of you so give me dexterity. Saving throws, please. Ooh. Uh, do you like me to? Like uh, the Crystal, three that William, J. up top. We'll rectify this with the other group in a second. Uh-oh. Oh, crud. That was... Mm, okay, That William, was a nat one. Nat one. Okay. 24. 24. J. And a four. Four? Four. Okay. Uh, the ship lurches. Uh, your timetables are completely thrown off because the ship doesn't start breaking apart uh, until a little bit later in the process, but the ship all of a sudden lurches. Uh, when it does, it leans to one side, and you see a, a few of the people that were standing up that you were instructing to put their luggage down slip and start making their way towards the railing, towards where the lifeboats are. Um, William, you are the closest. You brace yourself against the lifeboats since you were exploring them. But Jay and Crystal, you see a crowd of people that have fallen prone and are sliding towards the railing, towards where the water is. Um, uh, mm, okay, this is an, an... No, that's only five, ten pounds. Never mind. Um, uh, I'm going to run, I'm going to run down towards them. I'm going to try to shoot. I can't mage hand. Okay. Let's see if there's anything that I can do. Um, uh, how many people? I'd say right now uh, it's about it's about nine of them. Nine of them have slipped. The other ones have managed to grab onto items, uh, but nine of them are starting to slip and fall uh, towards this railing. Can I dash action? This is going to sound weird. Can I dash action towards the railing? Yes. To get there before them. You're going to run towards the railing. I want to get towards the railing, and I want to cast Enlarge on my... Can I cast it on self? You can. Creature object you can see within range. Yep. I can see myself. Am I allowed to cast it on myself? Yeah, you become an overgrown crystal as you... Because uh... I want to basically wedge myself like against the railing. I want to stop them from falling off the railing. Like a, a big me. Okay. Can I do that? 
you can. Or is that too weird? No, you can. Babe, this is this, – uh, this is another one of those high risk, high reward situations right now. You're basically going to be the buffer that stops yes, for all nine of them. people, nine people, like it's, pushing them, like yes. pl- placing yourself against this railing and stopping all of them and just sort of shoving them off. Totally that- ready to do it. My weight would be multiplied by eight, which is probably maybe not good against that railing in hindsight. Um, but I become large in size. Jay, what are you doing? I mean, I'm a really good pillow buffer for these people, Crystal, and I can hang on. Crystal hits the ground and then gets up and starts racing towards the railing. As she does, she starts growing in size. The ship starts to lean a little bit more in that direction. As the 100-pound 100 pound, 100 pound girl goes to, like, eight or 900 pounds. <laughs> like, okay. Let me take a look what's in my bag. Okay. Um, uh, Crystal, I will say for the sake of brevity, you are able to position yourself uh, as a very large woman. Uh, a very <laughs> large woman. You stop all of these individuals. And William, you are, you are watching as she jumps in front of these people that are about to f- fly off the edge and possibly hit debris. And she interposes herself there. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there an order to where how, how this is happening? Are we following? She she jumps there. I'm gonna say this. Crystal jumps there. William, it's your turn before anything okay. else happens. All right. I uh, click my bunny slippers heels together. Okay. Activating my bunny slippers. Your cool slippies. Yep. And I will use that speed to move. My maximum dis well, I'll move it in such a way where I can. If this will work, if this will work, okay, I'll use my rope, fifty feet of rope, tie it off, tie it, you know, like wrap it around her waist, and then tie it to another part of the ship opposite her. So it's like a, I'm going to run in a line along because I'm already against the rail. So I'm basically running along the rail, trying to reinforce the railing with the rope. Well, no, by wrapping around her so that she's tied to the ship on on my way past her. Got it. And then I'll tie it to another. Give it's like me, it's tied to two points. Give me a dexterity check to see how good you are at tying a knot fast along the railing and to a large woman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that will be a 19 total. All right. Uh, you feel that she is securely fashioned to the ship, like to the to – the, the railing and, and maybe one of the like the like pillars alongside. Yeah. Uh, okay. Just so just so if she gets knocked off, she doesn't go f- falling into the water. Okay, Jay. Um. It's it's the needs of the many before the few. I'm still going to interpose myself and make sure that people in a somewhat fashion like order and start loading up the first lifeboat. You maintain what you're doing there, um, Crystal. Crystal, give me a strength check. Oh, I'm really good at those. <laughs> oh, you got much better. Does it change based on a b- your size? I don't know. It does increase your strength. I can't remember what the... Uh... Um, It'll say in the spell. Yeah. Uh, if there isn't a, a, Until the spell is the target also has advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. Okay. Give me a sh- yeah. give me All a right. strength saving throw, please. Okay. Um oh which two okay. <sighs> that wasn't the best. Uh the first was a two and the second was a four. <laughs> okay. Okay. One of those was my die, wasn't it? Yep. Okay. Neither of them were, because it's been oh, really, really cruddy. I so I used two others. I can only do so. Um, okay. It's okay. It's okay. Just go with it. Go with it. Go with it. We're Crystal, good. So the railing breaks. Uh, it's too much pressure against it. It's eight people plus yourself. The railing breaks, and as it does, you push against it, but it's ju- you just don't have enough traction on the ground. The, okay. rope, the rope is tied to you. 
William secured it, but I don't know the weight capacities for a simple rope against okay. eight to nine hundred pounds. Fifty feet of hemp rope. Let's check the tensile strength. <laughs> I'm gonna hit you with a hard choice, Chris. Okay. I I think it's it's get everybody or get half of them. Everybody. That's not a hard choice. Uh, 1,215 pounds tensile strength. One high risk, two. high reward Perfect. every time. Crystal whoo, pushes against all of these people, and as she does, they go skittering towards where Jay and William, you have to, like, pick your feet up as she just, she does, like, a reverse worm, like, laying on her side, like, and just pushes this group of people that go skidding across the deck away. As she does, the railing breaks and as she does, where this rope is tied to her leg, to her person, it holds tight to this thing. It goes completely taut as she dangles off the side of the ship as it's, as it's standing there. Okay? Uh, Jay is continuing to help people. William is there. Um, all right. All right. Okay. The rope strains against this pillar. As it strains against this pillar, an individual walks up to the rope. Uh, Jay and William, give me perception checks. Twenty-one. Twenty. Uh, Jay and William you see a very familiar face. Uh, he is staring at the rope. Uh, it is a Captain Randall. He's dressed in uh, finery that you would find for the Titanic. And as he looks at the rope, uh, he begins to walk over amidst the crowd of people standing there he has not said anything he has not done anything he simply walks toward a crowd of people gathered around a lifeboat far away from the rope crystal the rope snaps i'm gonna give you uh, can i cast a uh, 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 levitate you can okay it's tied on two spots yep uh what what it's tied at two spots. What two spots on her body is it tied to? No, no, it's wrapped around her waist, but it was tied to, like almost like a hammock style. So it's tied from one pillar, her wrapped around her, and then tied to another. I will say that the rope, one of the little hammock snaps, and it causes her to flip, and she levitates, levitating above the ship. Uh, before you is the ethereal vision of Crystal, a uh, large woman. Unless levitate is a concentration spell, in which case. Yep, it is. So I am now tiny. In Shoot. which case, enlarge drops and the rope falls away because it was tied around oh. her figure. You levitate in the space. Uh, Randall will still stand in the area uh, with this group of people. Uh, uh, Jay, William, where are your eyes? On him or on Crystal? Uh, now that I obviously I'm staring directly at him. Okay, Jay. Here in the rope snap, I would have gone for Crystal. Jay, your eyes are on Crystal. William, you see this. Uh, I'm actually going to say this because it's going to be fairly apparent to everyone else as uh, Captain Randall takes a gun out from his side and makes prolonged eye contact with you uh, and fires. Not towards the group, not towards anyone else, but towards the crowd of individuals. When he does, Crystal is gone. It's a grandmother. Crystal, I'm going to need you to go ahead and turn off your camera. You are no longer here 
Uh, oh. Go ahead and keep it on, hey. but keep it on mute, please. Got it. You are gone for the time being. As Crystal disappears. Oh. Uh, he turns around and maintains eye contact with you, William. I am charging him. Good. Let's uh, cut to the next group then, uh, as that happens. Gonna <laughs> <I> hate you. <laughs> um, you all don't hear any of this happen. I need that understood. It's gonna be hard, but we can't metagame this. Okay. Um, right now, you all start heading below deck. Um, the problem is you're running past people. Um, there is a wave of people who are slowly making their way up to about mid-deck of this ship because they know where the lifeboats are. Um, as you are making your way past these people, what are we doing to navigate these, the sea of people? Um, Wolf is, is able to sort of interweave and make his way through, but Turk casts Kiara. I'm going to need something here, an argument as to how you're getting through this and, and heading below deck to, to help those that need it. Um, I'm going to be shot. Keep it orderly. Make way. I need to get below. Keep it orderly and see if I can talk my way. Intimidation and sense or people. persuasion. I would let you do either one here in this situation as you try to figure out what happened. As you're trying to like navigate by by using your charisma to push through. That's going to be a 22 on intimidation. Turk, you do. Uh, there is a brief pause and just... Uh, Almost simultaneously, I want the split screen of Jay being like, all right, everybody, let's keep a tight, orderly line. Uh, Turk is screaming this at the exact same time. All right, everybody, let's keep a tight, orderly line. And people shift over to the side to allow you passage through. Um, Turk, Cass, and Kiara, how far are we going? As water is starting to rise up in the ship, are we going to the bottom deck? I would like to go as low as we can get and just move people up you are getting below deck and as you get there you're getting into where the the lower class had quarters okay uh i'm not taking you to the engine room or things of that sort that area right. is, is donezo at this point uh the water is starting to f get very cold um around your ankles um when it gets to uh, about height of your legs that's when we're gonna have to start making constitution checks to see how Got we it. deal with cold unless you have any sort of resistance against it understood Got it. Yep. All right, perception checks from the three of you as you make your way to an area that, that less and less people are moving out of. 15. 15. Plus seven, that'll give me a 14. 14. You want to roll for Wolf, too? Yeah, definitely. 22. 22. Um, what, what do you get? I got an 11 on the die. Let me... Uh... You guys are a fairly perceptive lot. I got to remember that. Uh, as you make your way to this uh, uh, bottom deck, you, you notice that the lack of people running through. Turk, what'd you get? Did you find his uh, It's I'm looking him up right now. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to remember where I put him. There he is. He gets advantage on perception checks. That's going to take him to a 13 plus 6. That'll be a 19. Yep. Uh, you guys are a very perceptive lot. Uh, Cass, Turk, your eyes dart over to uh, one of the side hallways past the stairs as you hear a faint knocking on the door. Um, it, it, it is a rhythmic knock. Uh, it doesn't sound like someone frantically knocking against the door. It is just a small knock that happens occasionally. Um, Cass... Uh, and Turk, that's what you are drawn to. It's often a little side hallway away from the stairs. Kiara, you hear, while they're paying attention to this, you take a few steps forward that would lead you into this hallway more. Um, as you do, you hear the faint sounds of crying. Um, it, it's, it's, it's past this area, past the central area, and towards another side hallway off to the side. Do I notice her leading? Kiara takes a couple of uh, steps forward and then like cocks her head to the side. And then 
my first instinct is is a child and I need to get to that child. So I am going to the cry. And I'm actually, if I can, would like to cast Hunter's Mark on Kira. Yep. Oh, that's clever. Nice thinking with your noggin. (laughs) I don't think I've ever seen anyone use Hunter's Mark on an ally. Hang on, buddy. Get out of my sack! (laughs) (laughs) You choose a creature you can see. Okay, that'll never be said again. That's the last time. You have advantage. Yeah, there's no reason. Yeah. Uh, Take DM Inspiration. Turk, that was amazing. I've already got one. Um, Uh, Well, then... uh, Can I pass that off to uh, Kiara? Kiara, you got DM Inspiration vicariously. for, For sheer dumb luck. Uh, as you, uh, I love that. Uh, as you uh, make your way forward, Turk uh, uh, cast a hunter's mark upon you. You you feel this sl- uh, slight tingly sensation on your right shoulder. Um, if you were wearing something sleeveless, you would see the outline of a faint wolf's head on the on your shoulder. Um, okay. So uh, as you take off running in another direction, Turk and Cass, you are uh, a few. I would say you're about fifteen to twenty feet away from this door where the rhythmic knocking is taking place. How deep does the water get closer to the door? Uh, right now, the water is still at ankle level, but it's getting higher and higher the longer you are in this space. And it's still that high at the door? Uh, yes, at the door. Then I'm going to Give me an investigation check. Seven. Still, Thirteen for me. Thirteen. Yeah, it's still that level at the door. You place your hands upon it with a seven and a thirteen. Um... It, it, the door feels cold, but y- you're not sure what that means. Colder than it should be? Not with a seven. For the air temperature? Okay. Gotcha. Um, uh, I'm going to reach down and, and test the handle. Yeah. As you uh, test the handle, uh, there is an individual uh, that is um, tied up around the, the wrist. Uh, there is a gag around their mouth. Uh, and they are they are going mm, and they're just sort of banging their head rhythmically on the door. Um, I approach immediately with my and draw my dagger and and look to loosen them. Yeah, let, uh, let you them loose. you cut the the they um they're a very handsome gentleman. It's a he's a very handsome gentleman, long black hair. He almost looks um uh. uh ruggedly handsome uh he does not belong on this ship uh uh, looks like uh his hands are very calloused um he's uh uh he's got that uh that what is it five five o'clock shadow going uh white shirt uh blue pants and uh he goes, uh, thank you kindly. Uh, you have uh, 10 seconds. Explain yourself now. No, there was a, there was a gentleman. He, he, he came by. He knocked on the door uh, right before there was a big crash. And uh, I, I, he, he said the word sleep. I fell asleep. And when I woke up, m- my wrists were tied. My hands were tied behind me. And, and my, my pants have been getting freezing cold. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you pissed yourself or not, but you're looking a little wet down there. Um, <laughs> Even amidst all of this. Even amidst all this, he, he gives a slight laugh, like he can't help it. He's just like, I, I, I probably peed myself because I feel like the ship is sinking, the unsinkable. I, can can I can we go? Can we go? Yes, you get up on deck yeah. and you help out as much as you can, getting people safely into boats. Yeah, he shakes your hand, uh, Turk, and he walks by you, Cass, and then he comes back and he says, "Hi, it's nice to meet you, uh, Aaron, E R I N." <laughs> do you want to, to uh, no okay she's silent type that's fine uh yeah uh, uh, up deck uh help the ships got it and he uh runs up the stairs you just you know he just made a pass at you right Cass? oh he passed me all right um <laughs> <laughs> um with that being said i imagine the two of you turn back around and double back to where kiara is correct yes is he headed back up toward the top deck where the rest of the party is? Give me a perception check. <clears throat> 15. Yeah, you look towards the stairs. He's not moving with a great deal of haste, oh. but he's moving to the stairs and he gets cool. to the Cool, 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 cool. Looks like we're going to split the party again because Cass doesn't trust people with long hair and five o'clock shadows. Got it. All right. 
Uh, Turk, uh, you head off to go help Kiara, and Cass is like, cool, I'll see you later, bye. I'm like, you got this? Cool, bye. Turk, would you like to move that hunter's mark? Uh, no, actually, I'm going to keep the hunter's mark where it's at. Cass, you are on your own. We will justify that in a second. Uh, Kiara, uh, you get to a small door, and that crying continues. Um, uh, uh, as you get up close to the door, now the water is starting to creep in even more to this deck. Um, uh, and it's coming from this particular side. Uh, you don't know why. Um, the water is, is, is rising up to your knee right now. Uh, give me a constitution saving throw at advantage, please. Can I ask where Wolf is right now? And, and um... Wolf is next to you, unless you would have sent him with Kiara. I actually would have asked him to do investigations at room, see if you can find anybody else stuck down here. So. Got it. I'm on it. Um, it's a 21. A 21? Uh, yeah, you are fine. You managed to shake off whatever cold was affecting um, uh, the area, and, and, and you shiver a little bit and get to this door. Uh, the small crying, uh, the small sounds of crying uh, uh, are behind this door, and you're you're in front of it. I'm opening the door. Yep. Inside the door is a small boy uh, who is uh, 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 scrunched up by the bed. And as he's by the bed, um, he is uh, comforting his sister, who is also like standing, uh, standing on the, th the top bunk of this small room. And she's looking down at the water, and she seems to be parting it away from the door. Um, he's crying and sort of looking about the space, but she's concentrating, and the water is not filling the space as fast as it could be. Okay. Um. Oh boy, I am going to um. Teaching mode, uh, kid mode, um. All right, dears, we got, we've got to get up above deck. Come on, come on. Who are you? I'm Kiara. I'm here to help. Come on, we've got to get up before the water gets any higher. Sissy, we have to leave. Kiara's here, and she says we have to go before the water's higher. And and um, uh, the the girl up at the top is concentrating, and she's like, I think I think I'm stopping the water. We don't we don't need you. We're supposed to wait here. For who? For mom and dad. They said they'll be right back. You can do magic. Sometimes. I can too. And I'm going to go like this, and I'm just going to druid craft a small flower in my hand. Uh, she will turn to you, and uh, it will break the concentration that she has on this uh, manipulation of water. And as she does, more water starts coming into the place. Uh, the boy on the bed uh, starts getting a little anxious and nervous, but she looks at you, and as she does, she druid crafts a flower as well. Uh, uh, seeing this, uh, she will go... Um, let's go. It's time to hurry. And uh, the small boy will jump into one arm, and uh, she will jump off the top bunk into the other arm. And right now, yep. you are, you are two kids in. You know what I mean? Like, like, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Kiara comes walking out of this room. Uh, Turk, just as you pull around the corner and see uh, uh, that she's got two kids. Surprise. Are you good? Let's go. Yep. Move. Move. I'm gonna send a message to to Wolf. See if he's found anybody else down here. Um. Uh, you get a telepathic message that says, "No smells. Door locked. Ticking behind it." Um. Can I see a path on where he's at? Yeah, you know Did exactly he where he is throughout the path. You just He just says, small path, door lock, ticking behind it. I need to check something out real quick. You get out with the kids. You sure? I'm right behind you. Go. All right, I'm off. Kiara splits. Cass splits. Turk splits. Now seems like a good time to go check on William and Jay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, William and Jay, uh, I, you are at the top. Uh, uh, and right now you are helping facilitate, Jay, uh, as more and more people have uh, made their way in. And, uh, Jay, I need you to give me an intelligence saving throw, please. 
with my minus one, that is a nine. Okay. Uh, Kiara, Cass, and Turk, give me an intelligence saving throw as well, please. Oh, that 20. Not a 20. And with my plus zero, that'll be a 20. Just a 16. Uh, Jay, you, what did you get again? Nine. You knew there was some reason for you to be concerned just now, but you can't remember why. Okay. Your, you know your main concern right now is to keep these people safe. Cass, Kiara, uh, you know who Crystal is. She's been with you, but as you start, if you were to think back on her, her image would get a little hazy. You can't remember if she's a blonde or a brunette. Got it? Got it. Okay. And it's totally a bad idea to pull up my phone and look at that video I took of her, huh? It is. Turk, everything is fine for you. You know exactly who Crystal is. <laughs> got it got it got it okay uh yeah jay you continue to facilitate people uh it gets bad buddy they start pushing and shoving and stuff like that uh occasionally you see a group of three or four men uh off in the corner that uh that are uh conspiring uh, and they look like they're 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 pointing at you and talking about okay we're gonna rush this way like th they keep pointing at you and making this like sort of movement uh, right now, lifeboats are being lowered into the water as quickly as they can. Um, the mechanism closest to you, Jay, you hear it snag and click. Williams, the one that he was working on, is working fine. Uh, there's no issues. There's no problems with it. Uh, but the one next to you halts, and the, sh the boat is unable to lower into the water. Okay. Um, is it a two-rope mechanism, single-rope mechanism? Two-rope mechanism. System? All right, do they converge at a point at the top? They do. I will say for the sake, yes. Okay, I pull out one of my hand axes, and I'm trying to cut that. Okay. Uh, throw on my axe. Got it. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll get to that. William, uh, you rush forward uh, towards Captain Randall, uh, who is teaming in this mass of people. He's navigated and pushed his way through. Uh, you can either give me an acrobatics check to see about how you can manipulate through this crowd of people, uh, and get uh, my to... bunny slippers are still engaged. They are still engaged. So your speed is doubled, so you're moving real quick. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You managed to, uh, like a bunny, start making your way through uh, this area, pushing through people. And as you do, you get close to Captain Randall. Uh, what would you like to do? I would like to do an insight check on him. Please, what are you trying to incite? Um, I'm going to use my insightful fight. I'm going to myrtleize him. Okay. That's... It worked so well last time. Ver uh, versus his deception, correct? Uh, uh, yes. That is a 16 deception? Uh, that is a... Well, you can't see it, but it is a nat 20. Nat 20. Uh, you get Captain Randall's bead immediately. Okay. I want to attack. M Mike? I, I get what? What'd you say? Nothing, buddy. I, I, I want you to know, because you're in a crowd of people right now. Yep. And he did fire a gun off. Yep. But, but you're going to just start stabbing into him? Um, He can't shoot anybody else if he's fighting me. That's fair. I'm into it. I, I just, yep. Uh, give me an attack roll. Oh, well, that's much better. Uh, so it was a 13 on a die, so uh, 21. 21 total. 21 hits his AC. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, I will say there has never been a more sneakier attack than crowded on the Titanic with people all gathered around you. But after this, he's going to kind of know you're coming. Well, yeah, I did the, the insightful fight. Uh, oh, you get that regardless. I... Reginald Thomas Kincaid III, you rascal. Uh, go ahead <laughs> and uh, roll sneak attack damage. Okay. So it is uh, eight for the sword. Okay. It's three d six for the. Yeah. 
Uh, 12. So 20 total. 20 total. Uh, another scream elicits uh, from the people as, uh, what are you stabbing him with? Uh, short sword. Short sword. Uh, as uh, William uh, navigates his way through the crowd of people and begins to stab at uh, Captain Randall with a short sword. Uh, bits of blood uh, go flying forth. Um, there is, right now, it's still the chaos of the moment. All people know is they need to move away from this point. They need to move away from the lifeboat. They need to move away from whatever commotion is happening right now. Uh, and they start to do so. Uh, William, you have a pretty clear space as Captain Randall uh, turns around uh, as the stab in the back uh, as he grabs a hand instinctively and pulls out some of the blood on his hand. Uh, he turns back to look at you, and uh, I need you to give me a wisdom saving throw at disadvantage, please. No, at advantage, not disadvantage. So that would be an 18. 18. Uh, you feel a mind-altering magic uh, start to leave Captain Randall uh, and try, try to affect you. But uh, you your anger has pushed you to the point where this mind-altering magic is not going to have any effect on you whatsoever. As he begins to chant and walk backwards from you, and you manage to shake it off, and you are not charmed by him. And it's coming from him. It's coming from right, okay. Randall. Is that the best you got? Today you die. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Jay, with uh, with that, I think it's pretty obvious that William is fighting uh, uh, Randall, who you're weirded out. Why is he here? You don't know what's going on, but your priority still stands is to get as many people out as you possibly can. You cut through the rope fairly easily enough. The ship drops. <laughs> Um, they'll be fine the boat does not capsize <laughs> here's the good news the boat doesn't capsize Okay, the people on board take a little trip it's like Twilight Zone Tower of Terror uh, they take a little trip, they hit the water everything's fine you do realize though that you have cut the rope and you need to get these other two lifeboats off the ship and lowered down <laughs> no I don't um, once the uh, first lifeboat is cleared, yeah, I am gonna shove it off the side. Okay. Okay, you're just gonna get people in the boat and just shove the or no boat's gonna be empty. You shove um, the boats off. That's clever. Uh, yeah. do you do that with the, both the boats remaining in this small section? Um, yes, I do. Okay. Uh, this is when the ship cracks, uh, even louder. Uh, and as you push these other two boats, you turn back and look at the crowd, and I think all of them have the same look a dog has on their face when you do something odd and confusing, and they kind of tilt their head to the side <laughs> as they turn and look at you as you've just shoved two lifeboats into the water. Uh, um, I'm grabbing the nearest person to me. Can you swim? I, I'm, I'm sorry, what? Can you swim? <laughs> I mean... Yes, I've, 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 I've taken so Hold your long. breath, and I huck him over the side of the railing into the water. <laughs> <laughs> great, great, great. This is what we're doing. Yep, yep. This is what we're doing. Uh, let's cut back. Uh, as this man goes flying over, the camera follows him as he falls and falls and falls and falls and falls into the water. And then the camera goes past a window as a uh, uh, rugged-looking man walks up some stairs as his body falls. And uh, Cass, uh, you are not too far behind him. What would you like to do? So I was relatively close behind him after realizing I didn't like the cut of his jib and uh, running after him. Okay. That was a boat joke. Um, it was awesome. It was a great <laughs> boat joke. <laughs> so um, is he still within earshot is what the first thing. You could certainly try. Okay, then I'm going to book up the stairs a little bit more and go, ow! Uh, that'll do it. Uh, Aaron uh, turns around and, uh, wh what, what are you doing falling after me? Are you all I'm right? Sorry, could you say it again? What are you doing falling after me? Are you all right? 
I wanted to help everyone that was upstairs, but I just turned my ankle. Can you help me upstairs? Oh my god, are you pulling a... a give me a deception check. <laughs> She's pulling a help. She's pulling... Not <laughs> a get <laughs> help, <laughs> just help. I'm a, Does a 16 work for a helpless maiden? It absolutely She gets works. the advantage because she has boobs. <laughs> <laughs> You've already played this man as a player, so th th that kind of fits. Played the man? <laughs> played the man? <laughs> well, in the other two oh. characters' eyes, yes. Yes, oh, that's in true. In the time it takes him to come back to where I am, mm -hmm. I'm going to attempt to cast Zone of Truth on oh. the stairwell. As he begins to walk forward, uh, you cast Zone of Truth. Uh, what is the save on Zone of Truth? <clears throat> Sorry, I almost knocked my wine glass over. I'll tell you in a second. It is a... It's a Christmas save. 14. Okay. Zone of Truth activates. Uh, and you are able to tell if someone fails or makes their save, correct? He, okay. he fails his save. But I didn't ask anything. I understand that. But no, you just know whether it, it works in the zone. No. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to sit over here in the corner. Thank you. All right. Uh, 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 so um, what's, uh, what happened? Are you all right? So you, gonna, you said your ankle hurt. Yeah, I'm going to turn around and sit on the stair and, let, and stick my leg out a little bit and just kind of like baby it, cradle it, kind of overacting. Okay. And um, see, I guess I turned it as I was going up one of them they were all the water on my shoes everything got really slippery and I just kind of moved the wrong way and it hurts now uh, uh, okay uh, 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 let's get you upstairs quickly uh, the, the ship is sinking we cannot stay here in this area I know I know but I don't think I can walk um in my bag I think I might have some band-aids or something right. or some some a brace well yes let's uh let's go upstairs I don't think I can walk. Um, Let me, and I'm going to take my backpack off and start rummaging through it. It's still sitting on the stairs, hoping the water's not getting too high. Give me an intelligence check. 13. Uh, his accent changed. Curious. What was it before and what was it second? Uh, it had a bit more Irish. Uh, uh, hey, how are you? Ever since you cast Zone of Truth, he's been talking like this. Uh, are you all right? Uh, let's get you upstairs and, and, and get you looked after. So his accent, his dialect changed. Okay. That's curious. So, okay. All right. And um, let's go. I don't think I can walk. Look, it's swelling. It's so big. I can't walk on this. It's broken. <laughs> uh, he will kneel down and try to do a medicine check to examine your ankle. All right. Um, well, uh, it, uh, I think you're right. I think it is broken. Oh, are you a doctor? Uh, no, no, I'm not. Not in the slightest. That's really weird because if someone... Okay. Um, I... I'm going to keep digging through. <laughs> I'm going to keep digging through my bag um, and looking for anything there's like a red bull in there there's a naked smoothie in there there's like there's really nothing of import um and i said i don't finally look at him and i don't think i have it um can you can you maybe help me up and in the process of getting through that start to ask the questions i need okay yeah uh, he helps you up uh, uh extends a hand and, and says all right uh you, you're able to stand we need to move from the spot on this one foot, yeah, but the water's getting really high. I can't believe you were tied up down there. Who did that to you? Uh, well, hmm. um, uh, well, it, uh, it was a friend of mine. Oh my gosh, that's so unfortunate. That's no friend. I would not be that person's friend after that. Oh my gosh. What well, if you, you see them upstairs. He, he lets go of you. Uh-huh. You still stay standing. On one foot, I do, holding onto the railing of the staircase. He serious thing that takes a couple of steps backward, uh, back up steps? the stairs, two or three. Okay. Where are you going? Oh gosh, don't leave me here! I don't think I can walk. Give me a deception check at a at disadvantage.
<laughs> I did. 14 at a disadvantage. The other option was 20. Take what you can get. <laughs> Look, uh, there, there's something wrong here. I, I, I don't know why I haven't been able to... Uh, I shouldn't have said... Um, oh, uh, I What's wrong? What did you say that you shouldn't have said? No, that my friend tied me up. That I, don't I mean, you should absolutely say that. That's terrible. Your friend should never tie you up. Who's your friend? We should go find them. Um, Richard. Okay. 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 <laughs> Richard's I hate, a jerk. I hate this. I hate this so much. I don't know what's happening. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to send for help. You got this. Uh, Please don't leave me here. Oh, my goodness. Nope. I'm going to die. The water's so cool. Good luck. And he uh, <gasps> runs. He runs up the stairs. And I'm gonna follow him on perfectly normal angles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he takes off. Uh, Kiara, let's cut back to you. Yep. Okay. Um, lit uh, little kids. Yep. Boy and a girl. Yep. Uh, and you start making your way uh, uh, downtown, walking fast. Uh, you uh, start making your way back up to where the lifeboats are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I would say it takes a little bit of time. Uh, give me a perception check as you... <laughs> no, there's multiple stairways. I, I, that would be too 22. weird. 22. Yeah, 22. Uh, I say you take a different stairway. Uh, people are beginning to scramble and make their way. This deck is now packed with people. Uh, there yeah. are a lot of them. Um, as you uh, see, and uh, you have the two children in your hand, uh, but right now it is just a teeming mass of people that are scrambling for the boats. Uh, while you were on the deck uh, with the 22, you actually see a few people that decide to, uh, we're going to risk it, we're going to jump off into the water. Um, because the, it's, it's two men that are like, we are never going to make it to the boats, uh, and they just jump off um, uh, as you are on this uh, they jump over the railing. What would you like to do? Uh, I have the kids. The kids are my priority. The kids um, are my priority. Kids are my priority. I was a teacher. That's just that's who I am. That's me. Okay. Um. Do I see a lifeboat? You see a few of them, but like I said, there are many, 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 many people trying to make it their way. There's not right. enough lifeboats to go around. Right. I am a rather tall firebolg, and I stand out in a crowd. I think you do. <laughs> Why the children weren't afraid of me is beyond me. But, um, hold on, hold on one second, one second. I am... Uh... Turk, you're up next. So I'm technically considered large. You are. Um, are you gonna start shoulder checking people out of the absolutely way? Absolutely, I am. Perfect. I have yep. children. Yep. I am just make way. Here Ooh, I come. Get out the way. <laughs> get out. The, uh, yeah. I will be. I will be yelling okay. as I go, like out of my way, out of my way, out of my way. Intimidation at advantage as Bigfoot walks onto the deck carrying <laughs> two children and starts shoulder checking people. A very seductive Bigfoot, apparently, with bedroom eyes. You know <laughs> Kiara's got them bedroom eyes. <laughs> uh, intimidation. Where's the intimidation? The plus ones, so that's a dirty 20. Dirty 20. Yeah. You know what? It's it's too good uh, not to have Bigfoot shoulder checking people with seductive eyes uh, as you make your way over to a uh, to a lifeboat. Um, and uh, as you put the boy in the lifeboat, uh, the girl refuses to let go of you. And she looks at you in the eyes and she says, I can help people. I can help people. I'm, I'm good with water. Let me help. You are good with water. And I think there is something you can do in the boat. Okay. If you get in this boat, you can help people that are floating in the water get to the boat. Do you think you can do that? Yeah. I can find you afterwards. Absolutely. You will find me. I will find you. you what is your name? You promise I won't get lost? I promise you won't get lost. What is your name? Daisy. Daisy? Yep. Okay. And I'm going to take a couple. Um, I'm going to druid craft um, another flower with the one I already had and the one she had. And I'm just going to make her a small crown real quick. Put it on her head. Okay. Uh, I will 
find you. She gets in the lifeboat. Uh, with that, that's that's uh, enough people, and you see Fine. the lifeboat uh, lifeboat lowered into the water. Yep. Um, uh, as that happens, uh, we cut back to Turk. Turk, you were below uh, deck. Uh, I need you to give me another constitution saving throw as that water has creeped up even higher now. I need you to give me one for Wolf as well. That would be a 17 for me. Okay. And for Wolf. Uh, where'd it go? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, all of a sudden I can't figure out where he's at. It's okay. Uh, I'm going to roll. F uh, what did you roll on the dice? I rolled an 11. Okay. Wolf gets tired, buddy. The cold water, he's a little bit more absorbed into the cold water because he's not as tall as you are. Um, so he takes a point of exhaustion. Okay. Okay. Uh, all of his skill checks are going to be at disadvantage until he gets a long rest in him. But right now, Wolf has a point of exhaustion on him. As she, he's shivering a little bit. He's having a paddle a little bit to keep up with you. Okay. Um, am I at the door where you are at the, the door him? where he he brought you to, and he says it, 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 it's in there. Okay, you, you can't do anything else here. I'm thinking this to him. You make your way to the top. I'm I'm right behind you. Okay. Uh, uh, he will. Uh, he turns and then he comes back and then he like licks your hand as you're like, uh, as sort of one last act before he starts paddling through the water and heading up to to oh. mid deck. Uh, you're at the door, buddy. I'm going to open the door. Uh, it is locked. Um, I am going to uh, see if I can force the door. Okay. How are we doing the shoulder check? Do you have a weapon? Do you? Yeah, I've got short swords. Do it. And I've got. Uh, you full on shining this door open, buddy. I feel like you start hacking away at this thing with a "Here's Johnny" moment. Um, and, and as you uh, Johnny. give me give me attack rolls, luckily uh, doors have low ACs. Good, because I rolled a seven. Um, uh, I I think you you splinter it a little bit, but it's it's not a huge dent. You I, I get plus six on it. Thirteen. <laughs> I'll say you start wailing away into this thing. It takes you three or four hits, but as you do, you manage to cut a small opening that you could drag your hand through. Push your hand okay. through and, and, and unlock. unlock the door from the other side. Yep. Um, before you is an odd contraption, buddy. Uh, standing on uh, a small end table. Uh, the end table has been placed on the top bunk so as to keep it away from the water for as long as possible. Um, inside is a gl uh, is attached to what looks to be two plastic bricks um, or, or kind of looks like Play-Doh bricks or something along those lines. Um, and next to it is a small vial uh, with an, uh, a liquid inside of it. It looks like it's attached to the bricks. Um, th that's all you can see from now is little, like, tiny, oh my God. tiny, tiny little, you know, two little plastic bricks. <laughs> two little Play-Doh bricks. Play-Doh bricks and a, bricks and a little liquid. weird vial of liquid next to it. <laughs> and are there wires leading to the bricks to the Give me an investigation vials? check, Turk, as you walk into this room and you find this little, like, ticking thing. Oh, okay. I'll take the nat 20 on that one. Thank yeah, you buddy. Uh, oh, man. You watch Die Hard every Christmas. You know, <laughs> yeah. like... <laughs> Uh, like this is a this is a bomb, uh, but you don't know what it's doing here, uh, and it's like stacked on this secondary bunk, uh, uh, and you don't know why, but it's being kept away from the water. And um, do I have any hope of? Are there red wires and blue wires? And <laughs> tell you what, man, I will tell you what. Uh, somebody else, uh, DM William. Give me a D4, buddy. Two. There's a red wire and a blue wire. Oh, crap. I don't know what to do with the blue. <laughs> Is it always the red wire? Is it always the blue wire? Blue flower, red thorns. Blue flower, red thorns. I God, I wish it was okay. a color block. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. He obviously doesn't want it in the water. Uh, I I don't know what. This is bad. It, am I getting any indication of any maneuver I might want to make? Is there a way to separate the vial without? Do you have any is there anything at all going on for me here? Uh, give me just a general 
intelligence check, but with that investigation check, I will say that that everything looks very well connected. Uh, the blue wire connects to the plastic, and it's also connected to this container of liquid. The red wire just connects to the plastic uh, to and to the other plastic. It connects the two plastics. So red wire connecting the two plastics, blue wire connecting the little vial of liquid to one of the plastics. Oh, mama mia. <laughs> Thank you, Big Mike. Uh, Taking no action is an action. It is. And you could just turn tail and run, my dude. I can, and I am picking up the contraption. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. But you're picking it up? And I am, I am placing it underwater. <laughs> okay. And I am turning tail and running out of there. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to be hyper specific with me. Are you gingerly placing this device in the water? Are you going like are you yeeting it into the water as you run out of the room? I am I am gently I am picking it up as carefully as possible and seeing that they don't want this touching water. What they don't want, I want at this moment is what's going through his head. Turk. And um Turk, I, I, Turk, I need you to give me a dexterity check. Just, I've had. Do I just, go to my other die that I haven't rolled yet roll, tonight? Roll the d twenty and add your dex, please. <gasps> don't forget that, you have your other dice that i gave you i'm actually gonna pull a dm inspiration here okay um so i rolled a 10 which gives me a 13 roll again and that puts me at a 17 you needed a 15 as you lower the device into the water, uh, you are beginning to lower it. You stop and you flip it so that the vial of liquid is like near the top and you lower the plastic end first. You don't know why. And as you <laughs> do, as you do, as it enters into the water, there is a slight And nothing happens. Okay, I'm going to unpucker just a little bit. <laughs> and, um, no, you unpucker too much. Pucker back. <laughs> give, give, me a, give, no, give me a pucker check. No, pucker check. <laughs> <laughs> no please, Whoa. God. No, please. No, don't make a pucker check. No. Okay, I need another t-shirt. Let's go. Turk, yeah. and, uh, Turk and Cass, for the sake of your DM, I will say that you too start moving up to the mid deck to gather where everyone may be. Do we also have to make pucker checks? No. Cool. Never again. <laughs> I mean, if you want to, like, if you're totally, he's not saying you can't, but you don't have to. William. But you could if you want. It is your turn. Uh, do you continue to attack this man? Who I continue to assail you? him like he's never been assailed before. Give me another attack roll, please. Uh, that is 17? 17. Uh, do not make a t-shirt that says pucker check, Meowdeth. Yes, <laughs> make two. Uh, 17 does not hit. Uh, <laughs> as you stride forward with the short sword, and you are trying to just uh, to to strike out at him, but he, he pushes back against the railing of the ship. Uh... He... I'll use my bonus action to hit with my other sword. Oh, do it, yes. Uh, that is 69. And that adds what to the second sword? Oh, 22. 22. 22 hits. 
Uh, this is All not right. sneak attack damage. You have no allies nope. that are... No, this is, uh, because you did insightful fighting. Yep, yep, full sneak attack damage as well. All right, so just a 1d6 for that. Oh, so one for the first one. <laughs> okay. Jay, you're up next, buddy. In fact, while while William is rolling damage, I need... 13. Every... 13? Six, six, one. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. Okay, so that's 33 total. Uh, he is going to attempt to leap off the ship. Uh, you can give me a dex check to grab at his shirt as he attempts to leap off the ship. He's attempting to yeet himself. So, uh, as a reaction, uh, William, if you would like to to either take an attack of opportunity against him as he fle uh -huh. as he flees, or you can try to grab at his shirt. I will give you one or the other. Okay. Uh, how bad does he look? He has not taken the beating that you gave him last time where he was crawling in blood towards the door. You know what? I'm going to... He's going to die. He's going to jump. I'm going to grapple him. You're going to grapple him? I'm going to hug him. Okay. I'm, if he's going up, I'm going with him. Are you sure about this? He's not getting away. I will let you do this as an action then. Uh, 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 as he attempts to leap off, I will say that William... Uh, looks back at Jay and just leaps off the 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 deck. I would say Kiara, uh, Jay, Turk, Cass, you all witness as William like makes eye contact with you as you all finally make it to the mid deck around the same time, and William freaking splits the party one more time uh, as you have all uh, joined as he leaps off of the deck chasing after uh, Captain Randall who falls into the water. Um, while I mean, I know. It, for me, I know what he did. You do know what he did. Uh, Kiara, Cass, Turk, Jay, give me intelligence saving throws one more time. Jay, you That's might be muted, buddy. Me. Five for Turk. Tur 21. 21, Kiara, Cass. Cass, you, you don't really... I don't have any intelligence right now. No, you, I, I not, used it all. You're not remembering her. Like, uh, like for it, 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 it's it's the absence of when you and Kiara and Jay and Turk all got together and played D and D. Like the four of you with Gary. Like, and all of you are starting to. Hold on to these last vestiges, but you don't know anything's wrong. It's it's a it's a gradual slipping away. As this person just fades from memory. Uh, the four of you are on mid deck. Uh, the ship is beginning to fall apart. Uh, most of the lifeboats, thankfully, are are off at this point. Uh, Jay. Uh, is continuing to yeet people off the ship. Uh, those that say that they are sturdy swimmers, some of them do extremely well. S some of them don't, but we're not going to talk about those. We're going to talk about the ones that do extremely well. Um, as the four of you are standing aboard the, the midship and you guys all watch as William goes off, what are you guys going to do? I'm pulling my hood up on my cloak of manta ray, and I'm jumping in the water. Yep. I'm Kiara. going after him. Kiara, whew, hood up, jumps off the ship. Uh, give me uh, – let's do this. For everybody that's leaping off the boat, is anybody following her? Not yeah. yet. Not are yet. her kids – the kids have been placed. They're already in a boat somewhere. The kids are already in a boat. I am not jumping off because I have something I need to do on deck first because I need a hard surface. Okay. Kiara jumps off. Jay's not leaving. Turk? Um, I'm not leaving Cass. Yeah. Uh, Turk, you're staying there, and I'm saying Wolf is staying with Cass as well. As he's starting to shiver just a little bit, uh, but he is looking like he's, he's, he's doing much better. Um, Kiara and William, give me – I don't even know what a dive of this height would be. Give me a – Acrobatics. <laughs> 
athletics constitution yeah. all the above all the above <laughs> like give me athletics or acrobatics i'll let you pick i'm gonna go acrobatics i have a plus to that number all right william all uh, right um did i did i grasp him Oh, I'm going to say he jumped off. I was going to give you the chance to either like take a grab at him or take a slice at him as he jumped uh -huh. off. You chose the I wanted ladder. To, like, okay, but, I wanted to... but you had already used your action. Okay, You'd already right. used your bonus gotcha. action. Okay. So he was taking an attack of opportunity. If you have the grappler feet, if, no, I don't. You, if you have any of those, that would allow you to do something okay. along those lines. Okay, so I'm just diving after him. I imagine it's a cinematic moment of like him being like, "Well, bye," and you'd be like, "No, not today, Satan!" Like you. you like... <laughs> okay, so ah, uh, hmm. What? What? We're in the air, right? So it's basically we're just falling towards the water. I'll give you a couple of seconds if you wanna, if you wanna do something in the air of the two of you, just sort of staring at each other as you, you move through the air. Right. There's no action, so it's just like a looking at him kind of thing. We're out of. Do you want to try to grapple him in the air? No, maybe like pull a uh, crossbow. <laughs> I, I just don't sort of understand what like what what action economy is available at this point. The action just economy is not die. As you as you okay. leap if, as you leap off the boat. The, the, like, the number one goal is to hit this water and not pass out upon hitting the water. Okay. I will try and go, you know, try or as much as I can angle myself. So it'll be, I guess I, I will do acrobatics to try and fall exactly where he falls into the water. As he moves over towards where the water is. Right. Okay. Like, so I'm trying to make sure that my trajectory lands on top of his trajectory. Got it. So if he breaks the water... That's less tension, surface tension for me. Or I land on him. Even better. Even better. Um, um, acrobatics. Hit me with that acrobatics. Eighteen. Eighteen. Kiara, what did you get? Nineteen. Nineteen. You guys are one of the most graceful falling off the ship people <laughs> because you're you're like everybody else. You see them like jumping off, and it's a tense moment. One that would ruin a first date for a small teen boy if he was taking a date to see like these people falling off the ship. But you, Kiara and William, you are fine as you jump off of this boat and land. Uh, and sure enough, Randall. Randall. Oh, wait. Hang on. I got to play this out. Um, Randall's too, paying too much attention to William. And as he jumps, his head cracks on a piece of debris. And Randall is knocked unconscious as he falls Perfect. into the water. Uh, Kiara, you are next to uh, William uh, as you guys sort of pop up to the surface. Uh, and uh, the form of a, a, a man uh, next that landed in the water starts to sink below the surface. Not knowing who this man is and I can swim, I'm gonna try and get him william i will give you one se if you want to say something to her she you see kiara going after the man that jumped off the ship alongside you was knocked unconscious he dies today what william says that to you kiara do we kn do we know him i'm diving under the water to stab him oh <laughs> Okay, well, I'm... So I said my too. one thing, and I'm diving <laughs> under the water. All right. Okay. Uh, William dives under the water. Are you following suit, Kiara? Uh, yeah, I'm going to That's see this through. That's uh, two automatic failed death saving throws as uh, you shove your sword inside, uh, William, <laughs> as he begins to sink under the water uh, and just begins to get dragged under with the suction of the ship. All right, what are you doing? Um, I'm stabbing. She, I'm stabbing. she doesn't have to. It, things are not as pressing for her with the cloak of the manta ray. As you um, see, yeah, I'm fine. The minute <laughs> Kiara is, submerges herself in water, these giant, like, sort of wings extend. No, no, I see her. I see her. Yeah. I'm right. going to stay near William because I'm pulling him out of there if things get bad. Sure. That's my goal. The body continues to sink. I'll 
take another stab at him. How deep have we gotten? Maybe 10, 15? Cool. What's your constitution, big guy? 15. Give me a constitution saving throw at disadvantage as you are fully submerged in the ice-cold freezing water, please. Uh, well, I got a 15 on the first one. Okay. And I did even better on the next one. Perfect. So you I got yourself. a one. Yep. Uh, so one. Uh, so three total, but it was a nat one on the roll. Okay. Uh, it's a nat one. Okay. Uh, it gets real, real on cold. the die. It gets real, real cold, buddy, and it's getting hard to breathe. It's getting real hard to hold your breath as that point of exhaustion hits you. Your body goes a little numb, a lot of numb. And you manage to strike out with your your short sword one more time, slicing into Captain Randall's shoulder as he sinks in, leaving a trail of red that floats up, uh, leaving a trail behind in the water. Am I positive he's dead? If you would, you gonna do a medical medicine check? <laughs> I mean, how dead does this guy look? And well, do I feel okay? So here's why I'm asking: because if he's not dead, there's nothing that's going to stop me from trying to kill him. Uh, okay, I am here to tell you that you are both sinking in freezing cold water at nighttime. Yeah. You yes. saw him knocked unconscious. You stabbed him in the gut. Then you stabbed him a third time, and now your body is starting to go numb. So, William, right. you can continue closer to him and make as many medicine checks as you want, but no, no. You, you have one more failed save in you before I say, okay, now, William, make roll 3d6. Right. Now roll 3d6. I, I, I understand what you're saying, but knowing what he has done, I fully realize what he's done, and this is another member of my party. Then, what? I mean, how would you play that out? I can't. That is my job. Is I have to remember. I know, right? Here, I can't. Tell I know. You that's to, like, what I'm saying. It's it's hard for me to like. Okay, all right. I know I'm dying. I need to get back up. But William, I know what he this? did. It's the how about ultimate this? thing again. How about this? As he begins to sink, your eyes dart over to Kiara. Okay, and you realize that if you continue this path of revenge, when you may have achieved your goal there's a possibility that you could be sacrificing the lives of the four other remaining party members for the one. That would crumple me. I think in that moment, you, Mike, have to make a decision as a player as to where William's allegiances lie. Yep, yep. that's the lawful part. Okay. He takes the look over and for that brief briefest of seconds he remembers that he still has the rest of the team to protect and he cannot do it when he's dead. And I will reach my hand out to her as best I can before I pass out. Kick my little feet up to the surface, Mio. <laughs> uh, Kiara, it it is it is very close. He is very cold. Yeah. Um, I think with your swimming capabilities, you are able to get him over to the shore. Okay. Okay. Jay, Cass, and Turk. What are we doing while all this happens? I turned to Cass and I said, "What's your play, girl?" How many? as a perception thing, how many people have been yeeted and, um, Oh, no one told Jay to not to... stop. So, uh, like, like J J Jay, like the deck starts clearing out pretty quick because Jay is just like, Jay's almost in that rhythm. Uh, He's in the zone. Does anybody watch parks and rec? <laughs> All he's saying is, can you swim? He's too. <laughs> Can you swim? Jay, Jay's now at the point where he's not waiting for an answer mm -hmm. from people. Like he's like, "Can you swim?" Well, I never really. Wee! Like. Okay. Well, that actually secures what I'm gonna do even more. Um. So, working in the candy shop for a long time, you learn that you don't wash your hands and 
cold water because nothing comes off because it's all sugar and sugar gets cold and hard and doesn't stop. So she remembers that the marshmallow bunnies are going to get really, really hard in the 28 degree water. So she's going to take off the wherever she ended up putting it pink bead and smashing it on the side of the boat. You broke the DM. <laughs> well done. Okay. Okay. GM Cross, that was very generous. Please uh, specify which player you would like to receive that magical item, and I will make sure that they get it. Um, uh, also, buddy, do me a favor and roll a D100 for me. Uh, if you have dice at home, or you can use the dice roller on the Discord. Ha ha ha. Kiara, Ooh, you, you just oh. received a magical item. Uh, we will get that. I, I will consult my magic table as soon as we rectify this. Uh, Cass pulls out a <laughs> tiny pink marble. And as she does, she throws it against the side of the ship. And it continues to travel down. Down, 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 until it does hit the water. And that can sugary, sugar, sugar treat of all of those rabbity marshmallowy goodness hits the cold freezing water of the ocean and creates in an ironic twist of fate a, a large rectangular shape that if looked upon from the right height could be construed as a door and this door fits so many people upon it as all of those yeeted uh, crawl upon the door, and this door winds up fitting one, two, three, twenty, thirty, forty people, it seems like, as they all protect themselves on the sugary, marshmallowy goodness that is the door that saved many. <laughs> and then... And then... I don't know. <laughs> and, then, and then Turk picks her up and <laughs> and jumps over the side with her. I'll never let go. <laughs> I'll never let go, Jay. I'll never let her Jay. Uh Jay, your last one off, right? Is the deck clear? That's uh, my next one. The majority of the deck is clear. Okay. With a brief moment of clarity, I remember hearing gunshot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look in that direction. Uh, there are spots of blood on the deck. Is there a body? Uh, there is a body. Um, I'd like to approach it and see if they are still alive. Give me a medicine check. With proficiency, that's a total of 22. They are not. She looks okay. very kind. Um, she's wearing a crystal pendant around her neck. Uh, you don't know who this woman is, uh, but you it's weird. Uh, it's the same feeling of deja vu uh, that you sometimes get. There's a sense of longing. A sense of loss for this stranger that is lying on the deck of this ship. Um, I'll actually remove the necklace and pocket it, hoping to find a family member who I can return it to. Um, make sure, making sure you know there is uh, comfortable, I guess, if as a dead body can be. Um, <laughs> And uh, make sure the deck is mostly clear before I jump off. Yes. Yeah, I think you uh, you make sure the deck's clear and then jump off into the water. Um, as storytellers, we hope to craft the ideal world. Um, we hope to be heroes. We hope to avenge those that have been lost. And I think that we did our best to set out to do that this evening. Um, 
the lifeboats are eventually rescued. Another ship uh, comes in and they're able to rescue um, many of the people that you <laughs> yeeted off the boat. Uh, most of them being held comfortably aloft by the sugary door. Uh, many of them are freezing cold. Um, some people did not make it. Um, but more did with your help. As you make your way over to the island, Kiara, there's confusion still for you as you're not sure why William reacted the way he did. And William, I'm sorry, unfortunately, it's the curse of DMing. Your players may move on to different games, but you remember every single one of them. Throughout the courses of time, it's, it is your gift, it is your curse, it is all of it. And you know that even now, they, Turk and Jay and Kiara and Cass, they look happy. They won. They rescued people. They did what they always do, but you know that there's a, a missing piece. So it's bittersweet for them, but for you, you are filled with a terrible grief that you're not sure whether to share with them or not. You don't know whether it's better to protect them from what just happened or to share in what you experienced. You do know that there's a spot that the world needs people like Kiara and Cass and Jay and Turk. Now, more than ever, after Kiara pulled you from the brink of your own despair and, and loneliness, you know now more than ever the world needs them and that they need you because you're willing to make those decisions. So William, as you begin to think about what you want to do, whether you want to tell them or not. Quick, quick question. Um, none of them will ever remember her. She, correct? Correct. Um, I, I think as you, Jay, start looking around for a place to, to get these items, the survivors are being looked after on the island. Some of them having made their way close to where it is. Um, the two children in particular, um, you hear people talking about, uh, how these two kids, uh, uh, the girl put the boy on a boat and then she jumped on a piece of flotsam and started pushing all of the boats toward the rescue ship. The boats started moving of their own accord. And she was wearing a little flower crown above her head. And uh, there's, a, there's a woman that comes out of the, the, the forest and she's this beautiful woman. She's carrying uh, this umbrella and this carpet bag. And uh, as she walks over to where the little girl is that you met, she leans down and uh, you overhear the conversation. She goes, um, there's a place I can take you. You won't be lost. And there's other people there for you to help. And the little girl, like, shakes her head determinant and holds a hand out and, uh, and you watch as this uh, woman with this carpet bag and this long, silver, beautiful moonlight hair uh, walks uh, the small girl uh, into the forest to parts unknown. Uh, many of the, ref the people saved uh, leave the island. Some of them choose to stay. Even those that are leaving, um, you see the sense of confusion enter their heads as they begin to forget about anything that happened here. So, the, is there anything that you guys would like to say or discuss as you... Yeah. The, Jay, did you try to do anything with the necklace that you found? 
I'm, I'm asking. I'm not asking as me. I'm, this is out of character. So you you brought the. Um, yeah, once people were settled on the island, at least you know safe, um, would have gone to the main meeting area and started asking people just in random if they recognize the necklace at all. So if he does that, I will go over to see him and ask him what he's doing. Like just because he looks like he's walking randomly around. Um, what's what's going on, buddy? The the woman who was shot. Uh, this was hers. Oh. Just, I oh. felt like I needed to take it, make sure it got to where it belonged. Well, uh, that, wow, that's, uh, that's, that's awesome. Um, if you give it to me, I'll make sure it gets to the right party. I have a little bit of pull. I know what's going on. Yeah, sure. And I'll uh, hand it over to him. I'll take it and like gingerly hold it, and then I'll I'll put it in a pocket, in, like one of my top pockets, and um, I'll uh, walk off out of sight. And then I will um, put it on and put it underneath my shirt, and hide it close to your heart. Can I make sure that Wolf got off the ship okay? Wolf's, Wolf got off the ship, uh, jumping into the water with all of you. He's freezing. I think there's a small fire set up uh, for people that are coming out of the water. And uh, as you whistle for him, uh, he lifts a head up and just gives you a little... <laughs> and lays back down <laughs> next to the water. Um, uh, I would... Next to the fire. Go ahead, Wolf. I, I was going to say, I was going to make sure to help cast off the... Uh our door and and actually i'm gonna take her into a big embrace it girl you are amazing um i'm gonna run down the shore and i'm just gonna create bonfire every couple of feet like every couple of you know 20 feet or so so there's plenty for people to warm up by and um then i'm going to turn into a polar bear and i'm gonna go into the water and make sure everybody's out uh, I think you continue to do that uh, with Excalibur at your hand and, and continue to search. Uh, I think it turns more into I'm going to get as many bodies out. Um, I just, they, we lost them, but they deserve better than to be lost at sea. Uh, throughout your time, uh, you do manage to get bodies out and, and, and give them a proper burial. Um, you do manage to have quiet moments together where you all are sitting by the same fire. Uh, Kiara, during your travels, uh, floating above the water is an odd-looking key. Um, uh, it's weird because it floats above the water, uh, and it's a metal key, and you don't expect it to float. Um, uh, as you reach toward it, you realize the reason it's floating is it has an ethereal presence to it. Um, with a little bit of concentration, uh, you, are, you are able to pull this key out of the water and slip it into your pocket. Uh, uh, and I will say uh, that should you find someone uh, that does magic, um, are you familiar with the spell Dramagy's Instant Summons? Not at all. This is a very high level spell uh, that a 96 managed to roll. Um, I would have you look it up. Essentially, you are able to Place a summons on an object. Um, move away from that object. Leave the object with someone or a person or a place or a thing. And breaking this key would summon the object to you. So. <coughs> like Excalibur. You could essentially place Excalibur <laughs> and keep this key on you. And if something ever happened to the sword. If something happened and you needed to send it off with someone. Use it in a deal. The minute you got someplace safe, you could just break the key and the sword would instantly be take the place in your hand. Use it as you see fit. Look up the spell. Read the specifics. But, but it's a, an amazing item. It's a one-time use. Got it. Okay. Um, as all of you rest, uh, gathered around the fire, um, uh, uh, you notice uh, Mordru. 
come over to where you are and uh, uh his head staring down at the ground he addresses the feeling uh, he addresses the group and says um uh, you did good today thank you uh want to have a beer with us no i still don't like <laughs> you but you did good today rest tomorrow morning we will have auditions is there a play no you are one party member short we I think probably we certainly had it for i understand that but most groups have five it's regulation so we will find I'll come right it's just the rules guys we yeah. haven't filled you out yet we're working on it there. Well, how did we go in the first one without the right number? I'm not... oh, we struck the aisle. It was an emergency. I'm not sure. Uh, Will, you must have been counting himself as a player. Possibly. It happens sometimes. Rest. Eat food. Stay by the fire. I will most likely kill you in the morning. Excuse me? And oh, he, good! Sassy Pants is back! And he will <laughs> roll his eyes and turn around and head back. Um... Heroes, that's where we're going to end tonight's session. Uh, oh, wait. One before you finish. Please. Uh, so, after I've cheered these guys on, and, you know, hey, you guys did a fantastic job. You guys were amazing, and and you did it with four. That's impressive. Now, yeah, so we're going to get a new 